میرے پیارے آقا صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم کے پیارے دیوانوں دو منتف میلاد پاک مبارک ٹو آل آف یو ماشاء اللہ سبحان اللہ جزاک اللہ دس از دا منتھ ٹو شو دا اسپرٹ آف آور ایمان دس از ناٹ دا منتھ ٹو بی کوائٹ دس از دا منتھ ٹو بی اوور جوائٹ دس از دا منتھ ٹو ایکسپریس یور ہیپینیس اینڈ دس از دا منتھ ٹو ٹاک اینڈ لیسلی اباؤٹ دا بیسٹ کریشن آف اللہ سید المبیا علیہ افضل الصلاة و اکمل الثناء When you have to talk about the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم it's a difficult task Where do you start talking about someone who is the most spoken about in the history of mankind Nobody has been spoken about more than our beloved صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Nobody has been written about more than our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. When you open the books, there are so many chapters and each chapter, subhanallah, is all nur ala nur about the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillah. So I wanted to go in some other direction, but I was reminded by Janab Akil Sahab that the topic for today is the rights of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. So when Janab Aqeel Sahab said that today's topic is the rights of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, immediately some thoughts started to come in my mind. I mean, you don't even need to look in the books to know the rights of your Prophet over you. Even though I did take help of the books, but You know, your teachers have rights over you. Your parents have rights over you. Your children have rights over you. Elderly people have rights over you. Young people have rights over you. Then can you imagine the right of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So today, we will talk about only four rights. And I need you to pay attention. And I need you to remember those four rights, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and try to implement and fulfill those four rights towards the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The first right is the right of belief. We have to believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, alhamdulillah, we are Muslims and we inherited Islam from our parents and from our forefathers. Alhamdulillah, we should be grateful to Allah that no part of our life is covered with kufr. Isn't that a great ni'mat of Allah? For some people, a part of their life or a big part of their life is covered with kufr. And kufr actually means to cover. But Alhamdulillah, we have been in the light of iman since birth. And our parents raised us as Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us iman without us doing anything for it. Did we do anything for it? Did we deserve it? Did we pay for it? We didn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose us for Islam just out of His mercy and out of His favor. And if for nothing else, we should be grateful and extremely grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all our lives. Even if we did not have any other ni'mat, this, alhamdulillah, is the greatest ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. The gift of iman. So we have to believe, but we have to believe correctly. We have to believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam correctly. We have to believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like he is the Sayyidul Anbiya. He is the leader of all the prophets. We have to believe in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Khatam al-Nabiyyin, the seal of prophethood, the final prophet. Today there are some people who call themselves as believers, but they don't believe in the finality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right now in Pakistan there is turmoil. 
Okay? Because Alhamdulillah, the ulama and the awam of ahl sunnat wal jamaat, they are all in Islamabad. And they are demanding that a bill which was passed in the 1970s again, due to the efforts of the ulama of ahl sunnah where they said that those people who do not believe in the Prophet wasallam as the final prophet, they are not Muslims. They can be whatever they are. They can call themselves whatever they are. Their beliefs might be whatever, but they are not Muslims because they don't believe in the Prophet wasallam as he should be believed. And this is one of the rights of the Prophet wasallam. He is Khatam al Nabiyyin. There is no Prophet after that because there is no need of Prophet after him. He is still our Prophet. When other Prophets used to leave, then Prophets after them would come. Our Prophet وسلم, is still with us. We don't need any other Prophet. Our Prophet وسلم, is Hayatun Nabi. He is still our Prophet وسلم. He will be the Prophet till the last day. We don't need any other Prophet. We also believe that the Prophet وسلم, has the best characteristics. He is the most honorable creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No Prophet has any qualities before the Prophet وسلم, having Kamal in that quality. All the good qualities that exist our Prophet وسلم, possessed that quality to the extent of Kamal. This is how we should believe in our Prophet وسلم. We believe that our Prophet وسلم, has an authority. He is Sahib Sharia. Okay? We believe that the Prophet وسلم, has the knowledge of the unseen. We believe the Prophet وسلم, is Bashir and Nazir and Shahid. That means he is a Hazir and Nazir Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how you should believe because this is the right of the Prophet وسلم, over us. So what's the first one? Belief. This is the right. Now when you believe someone, <coughs> say for example, when you take someone as your manager, somebody becomes a manager in your office. So what that automatically means is that you have to take instructions from your manager. You can't do what you want to do because now he will tell you what to do. He will tell you how to do. Okay. So this is just to give an example. When we are connected to the Prophet Sallallahu by being his ummati. And he is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So immediately, we are his mahkum. We have to obey our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we take him as our Prophet and we do, then we have to obey him. And why not? When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself says, Atiyullah wa atiyu Rasul. That means, the itaat of the Prophet Sallallahu is absolute. Do you know what that means? You know Allah used the same term for himself and for his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Atiullah, obey Allah. Then the same word, Atiur Rasul, obey Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa ulil amri minkum. And those people who have authority amongst you. If you look carefully, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use atiyu for the third time. He used atiyu twice, but not the third time to show that the itaat, the obedience of others is not absolute. So, say you have to obey your parents, you have to obey your teacher, you have to obey your elders, but when they command you, you see if that command is not going against Allah and His Rasul's command. Only if this is the case, then you obey. So if your parents tell you to do anything against Islam, you will not. If your teacher tells you to do anything against the principles of Allah and His Rasul wasallam, you will not obey them. But that is not the case with the Prophet wasallam. His itaat is absolute. 
whatever the Prophet Sallallahu tells you, you have to do it, even though on the face of it, it is completely against the Quran. Even if it is against the Quran, you have to follow what the, and you have to obey what the Prophet Sallallahu says. Because Allah Ta'ala has given him that authority. I can give you many examples, but this is not the time for it. Okay? Like for example, just one example, we are not allowed to wear gold, men, no women, don't start screaming. Men are not allowed to wear gold. But when the Prophet wasallam said to Suraka, who was chasing the Prophet wasallam, that one day you will wear gold, the bangles, the gold bangles from the king. Now all the Sahaba were there. See, then Umar radiallahu ta'ala who was there. And the hukum is that men are not allowed to wear gold. But the Sahaba actually made Suraka radiallahu ta'ala who wear gold bangles. Even for a little while, but they did so. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had said so. So the itaat the obedience of the Prophet Sallallahu is absolute. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states that Allah Ta'ala did not send a Prophet but to be obeyed. Our Prophet has come to be obeyed. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, مَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَحَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives you, take it. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ stops you from, stay away from it. A simple command. Listen carefully again. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ said do, you can do. And there is goodness in it for you. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ stop you from, even though you want to do it, you have desire to do it, you have temptations calling you towards it, it is best for you to stay away from it. Because one day you will realize that had I listened to the Prophet ﷺ. One example about this, that a Sahabi, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he came to the Prophet ﷺ asking to do worship. Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, I am strong, I am fit, give me some worship to do. I want to do worship, I want to fast, how much should I fast? The Prophet Sallallahu gave him a simple answer and a, an answer full of mercy, subhanAllah. So practical. He said, fast for three days in a month. That is like fasting for the entire year. How? Because if you fast for one day, Allah gives you 10 days fasting. The reward for 10 days of fasting. If you fast for three days, how many fasts do you get? 30, that's a month. If you do that every month, you have fasted for the entire year. But he was young and energetic. He said, no, no, Ya Rasulullah give me more. I can do more. Then the Prophet Sallallahu finally said, okay then, the fast of Dawud is the best. Ya Rasulullah, what is the fast of Dawud He said he would fast for one day and would not fast for one day. So alternate days. In this way, you are fasting half of the year. He said, I started to do this. But when he got old, when he got weak, then he said, I wish I had taken the advice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he told me not to overcommit myself, but because I was young, I said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to fast. And I committed to fasting every other day. And now it has made life difficult for me. So see, even in terms of worship, just take whatever the Prophet gave you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can imagine in terms of evil deeds, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stop you from it, you best stop. Otherwise, you will learn the wrong way of the consequences of it. Right? So that's the second thing. What was the first one? Belief. The second one? Obedience. Everyone say? Obedience. That's the second right. So this is the right of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just two more, briefly. The third is that 
we should respect our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know there are two main things which is the essence of our Iman. And we always say that. The first is the love and the second is the respect of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not just the respect of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anything related to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should be respected. And why not? Allah is telling us how to respect the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is telling us. So you know, Allah told us, do not raise your voice in, in front of the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't raise your voice. Why? Because all your deeds will be destroyed and you won't even realize. Allah tells us, if you want, if you ever go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you're lucky enough to go to his door, what do you do when you go to people's doors and it is closed? You knock, you ring the bell. This is a normal thing to do. But with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what Allah said to the believers? Don't knock. Just wait outside until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself emerges. You can't knock on the door of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is no ordinary door. And there is no ordinary person behind that door. I mean, he is Sayyidul Anbiya. You don't know what he is doing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What he's engaged in. He might be communi communicating with his Lord. You just don't know. You can't knock. You know when people come for da'wah sometimes and they overstay their welcome? So the Sahaba, they would go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's house and then after eating, they would hang out for some time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obviously he is the best host. He is the best in manners. He would never say to anyone that, you know, you finish your job, now you have to leave. He's too polite for that. So he would just be quiet. But obviously Allah Ta'ala would know. He would not even make those faces where people could realize that, you know, we should go. No, no, no. He wouldn't do that. But Allah knows what is in the heart of His beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So He told the believers, Allah telling the believers directly, when you have finished your job around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you better disperse. Don't stay there for too long. You are actually hurting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by overstaying. Who is telling us these adab of the code of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah Himself. Allah Himself. And the respect the Sahaba had, Subhanallah. The Sahaba, there are so many Sahaba who say, we have never dared to look in the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We never looked in the eye of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They would always look down. Some Sahaba say that in a gathering, in a normal gathering, only two people would look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One was Abu Bakr as siddiq and one was Farooq Al-Azam Or everybody else would be looking down or looking at those two Sahabi and those two Sahabi are looking at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These Sahaba, they spend their lives with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But just out of respect, they would not narrate a hadith. They know everything what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. But they wouldn't narrate a hadith. Why? How can I say something which the Prophet said? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when they used to sit in the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would sit so still. They wouldn't move. Tere aage yun hai dabe lache. Fusaha arab ke bade bade. I mean, these are not ordinary people. They are the most eloquent people of the time. But when the Prophet spoke, they were just still. They were just cups, man. They were just so silent that koi jane muh mein zaba nahi. People would think they have no tongues in their mouth. Nahi, balke jism mein ja nahi. No, they would be so still that birds would come and sit on their heads thinking they are stones. This is how still they were in the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. So if you want to look at adab, and how important adab is. Look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then there are like scores of examples. But just Imam Malik, Alim in Medina, who's still buried in Medina. With his teacher Imam Nafi radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. 
he would never relieve himself in Medina. Why? Out of respect of Medina. He would never ride in Medina. Why? Out of respect of Medina. This is someone who even till today is called the, uh, the scholar of Medina. Ali me Medina. In our ummah, if somebody says Ali me Medina, it is Imam Malik radiallahu ta'ala. But he became famous not just for his knowledge, but for the respect he had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And lastly, very important actually, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, do not call out to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa like you call out to each other. You can't talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa like you would talk to each other. Okay? So, you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he had relations with people, so he was relative, uh, he was somebody's cousin, he was somebody's nephew, he was somebody's husband, he was somebody's father, okay? But each and every one of them, when they had to call, they wouldn't say, nobody would dare say, Ya Muhammad And if somebody said that, it was an Arabi, like a villager, who didn't know the respect of the court of Rasulullah he would sometimes say, Ya Muhammad. But for any other believer who had manners, he would always say, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Not just Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rasulullah fidaka ummi wa abi Ya Rasulullah My mother and my father be sacrificed upon you This is how they would I mean look at this Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq A childhood fri friend of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam But did he ever say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam No Always Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The wives And I was talking to like doing a speech in the women's today and I said what do wives call their husbands nowadays I mean your fathers they were not called with name by the by your mothers so you say what what, what does your mother say to your father kai gaya where where kaha ho homrod okay but nowadays wives use names okay so they, and it's okay nowadays, okay, when they use names. But the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even they would say, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the daughter, Sayyida Fatima, she would say, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see the respect they had? Always, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nowadays, some speakers say, you know, they keep saying, Muhammad, Muhammad in the, in the speech. Okay? The man is, is Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Especially when you call out When you call out It has to be Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And lastly So we have three rights Belief Obedience Respect Okay And the respect should continue now too So even now Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Adab Straight away Okay And lastly it is the right of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we pray durood upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Okay Now we all pray durood To pray durood at least once is first in the entire lifetime which I think we all have done Whenever you hear the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is important, that is wajib But then this is bare minimum isn't it? This is just bare minimum. Why should we suffice at the bare minimum? We want to excel. We want to excel. You know, you want, with your durus, remember this, okay? With your durus, you want to attract the attention and mercy of the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine today in the world, there are billions of Muslims. And they are all sending the rules upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How do you stand out? And never mind the people, never mind the believers. There are 70,000 angels who come every morning. 70,000? These Najdis can't do anything to them, Alhamdulillah. They could stay there and pray their durood on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 70,000 come during the day. And 70,000 come at night. And once they have come, they can never come again. 
Why? Because the number of angels is just so vast, so huge that they can only get chance once in their entire lifetime. So they are also sending the roots. Billions of Muslims are also sending the roots. How do you attract the attention of the Prophet ﷺ? How do you stand out? So you need to put all your effort in. Because when you pray durood, the angels take it as a gift and they present it to Rasulullah ﷺ. For example, Arif ibn Yusuf has sent durood upon you. Now imagine this happening a thousand times in a day. Will the Prophet ﷺ not know us? Like he knows all of us, but then he will really know us. He will recognize us. This is my ghulam who sends a thousand. See, the situation is different for different people, okay? So, somebody's situation, a thousand durood is nothing for him, okay? But for some of them, they are so busy serving, you know, their parents and their family and so on. A thousand may be difficult. So, the Prophet ﷺ would appreciate whatever you do, considering your situation. So, if your situation allows three thousand, pray three thousand. But if your situation allows 300, at least do that. The Prophet ﷺ appreciates. And I would say that the Prophet ﷺ, say if you're in a habit of doing something, he would miss it, even though he doesn't need our duru. But he might miss it. Sayyidina Qutbuddin Bakhtiyar, Kaki Rahmatullah the Khalifa of Sayyidi Khwaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullah He would pray 3,000 durood every day. 3,000. And when he got married, and one of our brothers is getting married, mashallah, today. May Allah give him a long, happy, and healthy married life, inshallah. No, not, not in this country, somewhere else. No, mashallah. Okay, so, so, Hazrat uh, Kutubuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki Rahmatullah, he prayed 3,000 durudhs. He would pray. And obviously, you get busy. You get busy, you know, when you get married in the marriage ceremony and so on. Okay? So you cannot stick to your normal routine. Like this brother of ours, he was always on WhatsApp and on social media. And he said, for the next two, three weeks, you know, don't disturb me. So, yeah. Because he's busy with somebody else. Okay? But, Sayyidina Bhaktiare Kaki Ramtulale, he would pray 3,000. But he got busy with something, obviously, uh, you know, with the marriage ceremony and so on. So he couldn't pray those 3,000. Now the Prophet wasallam, he missed those durudhs. He was used to those durudhs. He appreciated those durudhs. Subhanallah. What an honor. So he came either in his own dream or somebody else's dream. And he said, tell Bakhtiyar, I'm waiting for his durudhs. I'm waiting for his duru. Subhanallah, kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So even if you pray hundred, but you pray hundred every day, that has made a place for you in the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In that billions and trillions which he's getting every day, your hundred, there's a slot for it. Then when you don't send, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will see, why is he not sending? And maybe you might get a reminder from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But first get into that routine. First, at least pray those durudhs. Because the more durood you pray, the closer you will be to the Prophet ﷺ on the day of judgment. And the closer you are to him, the closer to you are to the mercy of Allah. You don't want to be far away from the Prophet ﷺ. So we could go on. Just about durood, we could be here all night. But I'm sure you understand the importance of it. Do something special. Especially in these 12 days at least. Okay? Something which is personal. What you do for your Prophet. What you do for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something personal. Okay? Just as a gift to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then you will see the benefits in this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to celebrate Milad correctly. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the barakat of Milad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.